Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock with Create in Color for another great spring month. I'm so excited, the weather's so great lately, at my house at least. And I'm gonna be using Tweet Memories. There's two sets with birds this month, and like how fun is that for doing all kinds of spring cards. So I'm going to be using a bunch of supplies that you might be interested in. One is Super Color Pencils. These are by Karen Dash. They're a high-end watercolor pencil, but you can use other watercolor pencil brands to do what I'm about to do here for the sky. The image, you might notice the strings are a little bit longer on the swing and there's an extra branch in there. You can go over to my blog and my YouTube channel and find the tutorial for doing the masking here because I did that separately so that the coloring here could be in real time as opposed to sped up so I can talk through it a little bit more. But I'm putting some water down, just lots and lots of water with a big fat brush. This is a silver brush, black velvet number 12 round, just big honking brush, because I want lots and lots of water here, because I'm going to use a tea strainer. Yes, a tea strainer. I've used this for regular pencils as well as these watercolor pencils. It's a little easier to deal with with watercolor because as soon as the powdered pigment hits the surface that's all wet, it sticks to those places and it shouldn't stick to the other places. So if you're trying to color something and you wanna add color into it, if it's wet pigment, you can just do it right over top of a specific area and then use your breath or a, a hairdryer or something to blow off any excess color. But in a sky like this, it keeps you from having to scribble all over the thing to try to figure out how to make a really soft sky because that would be really hard to do, getting all that watercolor to melt out but when it starts out as powder, it doesn't start out with lines in it. So you can adjust it. With some watercolor pencils like these, you can lift color off, which is what I'm doing. I've got a baby wipe that I'm removing some of the excess so that I get really soft edges around the clouds. If you're using something like Inktense pencils though, just make sure you use tons of water because those don't tend to lift very well. So they won't work as well for a technique like this, but other watercolor pencils should do just fine. The rest of it now is just regular watercolor pencil coloring. Watercolor pencils are excellent for people who want a watercolor but want some more control. <laughs> and with these, you can put the color down specifically where you want it. You're not tied to, oh my gosh, I have all this water and I have to figure out how to manage that. You can just put the color down and go have lunch and come back and then start doing the water work. And I'm using a silver brush Number eight this time, smaller brush, because I'm using smaller images. And you can get variations in color in a couple of different ways using watercolor pencils. You can either do what I've done here by adding extra pencil in one area and then letting the water carry the pigment into the lighter areas so you get a variation in the amount of pigment that's on the image. And here I'm just, I was waiting for some of that pigment to turn into watercolor. Sometimes it'll take a minute for the two to mix so that they'll flow nicely and then just push it around the other area where you want the bird to be a little lighter. Rinse the brush and you can go back into another area. If you leave color on your brush and then you go touch a new area that you want to have some lightness in, then sometimes that's going to carry extra pigment with it. So I wanted to make sure the tip of that tail was nice and light, so I rinsed my brush. Now here, I wanted to have a really pale blue on the tummy and on the wings, so I can pull color in from the area around the tummy and the wings. I don't have to put color in there because this color should lift and move while it's wet. And a brand like this, or the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, um, some of the good brands, you can let it all dry, like completely dry, and then go back and rework it again and use a wet brush to move color around, repair some areas, that kind of thing, very easily. Inktense pencils are the one that I'm, I know you can't do that with as easily. There is a little lifting that can happen with those, and there's an ongoing debate. Some people tell me that is not possible. I have found it to actually happen to me, so I will let you decide if those are the pencils that you choose to use. So for this really tiny branch, it's kind of tough to get in that really skinny area. I'm even using that silver number eight. Could have switched to a smaller brush, but I try to give you advice on not buying all the things. You don't need every brush in every size. 
But for something like this little tiny branch, you just need to have a really, just a slow technique at getting the color in there. Don't try to hurry because as soon as you start hurrying, then you press harder on the brush. Just go slow and easy. But with something like this, you could also just use a really sharp pencil and use pencil for that farther end that's really skinny and not worry about trying to use a brush on that portion because you can use your watercolor pencils just like pencil. They will act just like pencils if, if you don't have regular pencils and they don't have to be fixed or anything with the water. That's not a requirement. It's just part of the fun of watercolor pencils. So for each of the leaves, I just put a little bit of dark green at the base of each leaf and then spread the color around using the brush. Super simple, very controlled for those of you who love control because I know how important that can be. And now for the birdhouse. I debated whether to jump into a whole bunch of other colors and do the birdhouse in that. And I decided I would, just wanted to stick with the colors I already have on the card. I will add one little tiny pop of color at the very end, but the rest of it I wanted to kind of maintain a really nice, calm blue, green, and brown colorway for my card. By the way, I am doing this on Arches watercolor paper. And Arches has a couple of different textures to it. This one is the cold press. The hot press is very flat. So if you have trouble with your watercolor pencil not lifting and you end up with lots of little kind of pixely looking spots, that's the pencil sticking to the raised surfaces of the texture. A hot press paper is not gonna do that as much. So you may wanna try a hot press. If you use the rough, then you get lots of texture. And it it's all depends on the sensibilities of the artist and what you want to do. So my flowers in the top are also going to be the same colors. I'm gonna make them that nice bright blue color. Just putting a little of the blue at the base of that section. There's a little tiny triangle at the bottom of each flower that I'll add a little spark to in a few minutes, but the rest of it just kind of going around with that same blue. I wanted my birds to be more intense, but I was waiting for them to dry because they had a lot of water in them from that first pass. And you can layer watercolors, pencils. You can just go right over top of it. Wait until it's fully dry though, or else you're gonna have a heck of a time moving that color. Because there are techniques where you can add watercolor pencil while it's wet in order to achieve particular effects, but for a lot of, a lot of stuff, they're not gonna be performing the way you want if you go over a pencil while it's still wet. So here I've used the water first to wet the pencil, the extra, extra pencil that I put down, cleaned my brush, because I didn't wanna continue pushing all that much more color around the birds. I wanted them to have more dimension, so I needed a clean brush to move that. And for the last little portion to color is the rest of the birdhouse. I used the green from the leaves so that that would match. And then I used the brown from the branch to put on the inside of the heart in the, the doorway of the birdhouse. So this was a really fun and sweet little card. There's lots of great sentiments in this. So you can do love sentiments for your sweetie or you can um, do other sentiments which I always do because I have no sweetie. <laughs> Unless, I, I suppose I could send cards to my dogs, but I'm not sure they would care very much. They would just eat them. But here's that little pop of color. I just added a little bit of orange to the beaks and the flowers and then that portion of the doorway. So I suggest the next time you're in the grocery store, pick up a tea strainer. It doesn't have to be this one. Mine happens to be pink, but you can use any kind of tea strainer for this kind of a thing. I'm going to be using the super color pencils again tonight on Facebook Live. So if you want to join me on the blog post for this particular video, there is a downloadable button where you can get the image and print it out. You can print it out on Nina because I'm going to be using Nina and talking about how you can use watercolor pencils on Nina and not have to get out some watercolor paper in order to do watercolor pencil work. All right. I will see you tonight, I hope. If not, I'll meet you back here next month with some fresh creative inspiration. Take care. Bye-bye.